Inside Press Box is presented by Live Casino and Hotel. Always live, always on. And welcome into the grand finale of Inside Press Box. Stan the Fan Charles here with my co-host Gary Stein. And Gary, we've saved our best for last. No doubt about it. We're going to send off the show in style, my friend. Here we go on the final time. Baltimore Polytechnic Institute Wrestling is competing for glory on and off the mat. Poly head coach Wavy Gibson III looks back on his National Wrestling Hall of Fame career and previews the road ahead for his engineers. And later in the show, Stan and I reflect on the 518 episode Inside Press Box run here on WMAR2. Join us as we look back on the impact of Inside Press Box. You look good there, Stanley. I look much younger. But first, six-time defending MAC Commonwealth champion Stevenson University men's lacrosse opens the 2019 season Saturday, February 16th. It's a pleasure to welcome in an old friend, Stevenson's Heads men's lacrosse coach, Paul Canabene. I almost did it again. <laughs> Paul, thanks. Great to see you again. Well, Greg, thanks for having me. Congratulations to you guys for Thank such you. a great run and a tremendous successful show. I'm happy to be here. Hey, you, you've you been now at Stevenson. You're embarking on your 15th season. So when you were first <laughs> on our show, you'd probably been three or four years into your run there. Yeah. Uh, put it into perspective. Is that job gone as exactly as you hoped it would go? Uh, it's gone beyond that. I think mm. really when I first started at Stevenson, you know, I had a, a walkie-talkie as a trainer, a slanted room. My uh, AD was picking up rocks out of our practice field. It was a slanted field, and we just had the Green Spring campus. And uh, so we've gone now from, you know, bringing your own chair to games to a great stadium. Didn't have a locker room. We used to use the garage as our locker room. Uh, so we went really gone full circle here with all this. And I never thought when I first got there that I'd be there 15 years. I thought I'd be there six, uh, six months, and then I'd be on to the next job. But it's really Really turned out to be a great place because Stevenson really treats people so well and uh, you know be there 15 years and to be where you are now and to accomplish what our programs accomplished I think if you look back to everything we had to overcome is a true miracle because nobody would have thought the program I took over with only 17 guys in the team in our first team meeting would be able to win a national championship be able to go 10 straight NCAA tournaments we have 80 All-Americans when they never even had a tough time getting all conference guys at that time you know I want to talk about that stadium real, real quick Paul and we talked about it before the show tonight I live not too far from the stadium Stadium. And I remember when it used to be the old Colts facility, yeah. and the old Ravens facility, and, yeah. that, and that was fine. But there wasn't a lot of activity. There wasn't a lot of traffic there. When Villa Julie basically moved to Stevenson on Owings Mills Boulevard and made that a place to be, there's so much activity. Your stadium has to be one of the best D3 stadiums in the country, maybe the best as far as the sport is well, concerned. We definitely are really happy about how it turned out, you know, and I think it turned out to be one of the better places to be in the country to come play. That's why we play so many home games every year. That's why Tusk comes to us every year because of the atmosphere and, the, and the, what that brings to us. And that stadium has helped us bring in so many great recruits, but it also legitimized what we were at Stevenson, not just for the lacrosse program, but the football programs and the basketball programs. Everybody really gave us a mark now. When people drive by, they go, wow, look at this. Look what Stevenson does. And now they have victory there. President Manning got the statue there and everything. We've really added on all the touches to make it a really first-class venue. And uh, a lot of people went into making that with Tim Campbell and Brett Adams and President Manning were there at that time. They did so much to get that done, uh, but it's turned out to be really a great recruiting thing for us because you come and play in Mustang Stadium and uh, you, when the lights are the brightest at night it's really unbelievable. Yep. Normally when we have you on the show we always talk about Stevenson lacrosse and I haven't asked you a lot of questions about your career as a player yep. but I in my time researching you and all that years ago I found out you were considered arguably maybe the best face-off guy <laughs> that has ever played D1 lacrosse. Uh, well, I got. You know, are you close at least? Well, you know, I got lucky a few times. I like to say, you know what I mean. But I think in, you know, I really kind of prospered. I wouldn't say in Division One when I played in college. You know, I think my senior year I really blossomed. Had an unbelievable year. Uh, before that, I, I I was trying to figure out life as most college kids were. I really bloomed right after college in my senior year, going through the pros, and I was able to play to us 36 year old, 36 years old, and mm. playing the MLL and the NLL, and you know, a lot of club ball. Everybody forgets that about Mount Washington and the Green Trail. Everybody forgets about all those teams and. and really had a, a very successful run at uh, facing off. I'd like to say I'm probably in the in the argument, uh, but you know I don't think anybody can really say with face off guys who's the best one because we can beat each other in any given day. Does that give you the fact that you understand the leverage involved in that? Does that give you an ability to teach something that then helps your team 
really have an edge? Well, I think we've done very well at that position. You know, we've been able to coach a lot of great guys that have come through our place. Ray Whitty, um, Brent Hyken, you know, all guys that have played in the pros at times and really help us give us an edge to do that. We've been very successful. We had a great kid last, for the last few years, and we're, I think we have a couple kids this year that are going to be outstanding. So it does give us a little bit of an edge, I think, to be to understand what's going to happen and actually help kids figure out that's not two guys just facing off. There's actually a skill to it and the thinking that goes behind it. You've been in the MAC Commonwealth now for six years. Yep. You um, <laughs> won, a, won an NCAA championship in 2013. Your regular season record in the MAC is 48 and 0. Okay, we like that, and that's very good, right? <laughs> it's actually probably close to perfect, right? Yep. Uh, but the question is, how do you coach with that? Well, I think that the way we go about our season is that we want to play the best to be the best. And so our regular season, we leading up to our conference play, you know, we play pretty much seven of the top ten teams in the country each and every year. And that really gives us the mentality going into conference play to get our team ready to play a certain way every day. Because that's what I believe in. You know, I believe you can only play one way and you can't turn it on and off, so you got to bring it every day. And we encourage our kids to do that by playing the best teams. We've won enough regular season games. We can be 25-0 and 0 every year if we wanted to be going into the playoffs. But we really try to play the best teams to get ourselves situated for our conference tournament and to be successful in the NCAA tournament and it's been fairly successful over the last 10 years. Mm -hmm. We've got about 30 seconds Paul so last question. I asked you how your team is shaping up this year. Yeah. You said I'm defen I'm healthy yeah. on the defensive it's side of nice things. Nice to be healthy. You had about eight injuries to your defense. Well, we last lost year? five of our top six guys last year in the defensive end in the first four games of the year. And when you lose a guy like Don DeFazio, who was the year before an All American in the Conference Defensive Player of the Year, out for the year, we have him back. Dylan Harris, who broke his ankle, is one of the best takeaway guys in the country to do that. Joey Cannon, another guy who's played I think 40 games for us, started. He's back to do that. And then we got the other two guys back. So it really helps us give us more experience. And then we have the guys who had to step in last year, Drew Costco, who played so well, had to step in to be a starter. We have the freshmen who had to step in. Now they can kind of play for us, so we have a little more experience. So now we went from last year having like three guys healthy, now we have about six or seven guys we can really rely on. So that's only helped us this year. That's why we're so excited. Let's awesome. keep them healthy. Thank All you. Right. Thanks for having me, guys. It's been great. So proud. Such a good of you. friend of the show. I appreciate right. it. Thanks for having me. Always been good to us. Paul Canda Benning. After the break, Polly Head Varsity Wrestling Coach Wavy Gibson and his observation on this year's squad. Stay with us for the rest of the grand finale of Inside Press Box. And Hero Appreciation Day is every Wednesday at Live Casino and Hotel. Live rewards members with a valid military DOD police officer or firefighter ID receive special offers. Visit LiveCasinoHotel.com for details. At Arundel Mills, must be 21. Please play responsibly. For help, call 1-800-GAMBLER. And looking for a great deal on clothing or hard-to-find collectibles? Goodwill has it all with low prices on thousands of items. Their inventory changes daily, so you never know what you're going to find. Visit GiveToGoodwill.org. Inside Press Box is presented by Live Casino and Hotel. Always live, always on.